Please use this app responsibly, watch first and practice later. Cross behind steps can be neat little joining steps for step sequences or even steps in pattern dances, in ice dancing. In hockey, maybe a great way to dodge out of the way of an opponent. So it's a good step to learn so that you can really transfer your weight at will in an unusual fashion. Let's get started. In this tutorial, we're going to make sure you know how to make that nice, neat foot placement without staring down at your feet and that you fully understand how the weight transfer for this neat little step truly works. A critical point for a good quality cross behind is going to be using our own feet and legs as a template to know how to get our legs and feet tucked close enough around one another. What do I mean by that? We're gonna use the sense of touch that we have around our legs and even the pressure that we can feel from squeezing them together to know that we've brought the legs into the right position before we attempt to exchange our body weight across to the opposite foot. We can try this by the wall to start with if we want to build confidence. If we glide along on a straight glide, we're going to gently rotate that leg after the push to start to allow it to tuck in and cross over to the opposite side. It's going to be hooked gently, flexed. And the flex is very important because I want to be able to make sure that this foot can meet the floor and glide immediately. If I tuck my foot behind but neglect to flex, I'm going to end up, if I'm a figure skater, toe first. If I'm a hockey skater, I might equally regret it because there's not an awful lot of glide to be had on the top end of your blades either. So we tuck that leg behind using our shin and calf to guide us and we flex, meet the floor and then gently we're going to start to slide the other foot away in front that allows us to complete the action. There is a small amount of weight transfer from my first leg across to the opposite side. It's a horizontal transition. We may say cross behind, but it's definitely not a backward step. This feeling is going to be much more horizontal as we exchange from one to the other, which reduces our risk of slipping backwards as we make the step. Zooming down to the feet and in a follow view, it gives us an opportunity to observe something really important. So here we go again, we're gonna go in super duper slow motion. We're gonna see that foot tuck in tidy, but it's on a diagonal leaning. And then as the weight transfers, you can see how the blade writes itself. Let's watch again with a little highlighter. It meets the floor at a slight diagonal and now as the weight transfers horizontally, that blade is going to become more and more vertical as the front foot slides away. In profile view, we can notice how important it is to get that parallel park of those feet and we'll go super slow motion again so that we can really see the flex moment. The blade meets the floor slightly heel first and then rolls into the glide. Joining together for this little exercise, we're going to start each one with a push to keep us going in our momentum. Then we're going to hook that foot, tuck and flex, make that weight exchange, feet back together. Then we can push again and try the opposite foot. Tuck, flex, down we go, weight exchange, feet together, push with that foot and repeat. So we get to alternate each time from one foot to the other. As we build repetitions in this exercise, it's so important to try to maintain a good still upper body, shoulders square to the direction that you're skating in, arms very, very still. They can be held at shoulder height or even a little lower if you feel that that interferes with your balance. But let's go really slow motion here. You can see we're trying to isolate the feet to get them to do all of the work whilst the upper body stays completely isolated from what's going on down below.